If you're still thinking about the Chanel 22 bag, should you go for the mini size or should you go for the larger size? And I have the size small right here. So let's go over their dimensions first because that was one of the questions that I had. The dimension of the mini size, which is... I think it is the most popular size as of right now. The top of the mini size is eight and a half inch, but the bottom length here is 6.75. And the height of the bag from the top to here is seven and a half. The strap drop is 21.5. So from the top of the bag till here, I got a question about the length of these straps. I still think that the leather one is slightly tighter but um it's pretty much even on mine so this one is the smallest size of the larger bag the top measures 14 and a half the bottom length is about 11 and a half and the height is 12 inch and the depth here is three inches and the strap drop as well on this one from here to here is about 12 inch. Depending on how much you scrunch it, you can get a bit more strap drop. But the strap drop is super comfortable for anybody, I would think, even with your winter coat. Now, the number one question I have is how has it been doing? Do you have issues right now with your 22 bag? Because as you all know, and like I said, I will link all my previous videos on the 22 bag in the description below. As you all know, I own the small size, so this larger hobo last year. I pretty much got it when it first debuted, like one season later, but it's pretty much the beginning of when this bag debuted. And I got an issue with the rubbing of the leather. It was sort of like a bittersweet experience because I actually really, really love this bag and hence the reason why I got it back. Um, but the wear and tear, which I wouldn't consider normal wear and tear was too premature. So anyway, am I still having those issues right now? And the answer is I'm happy to report that so far so good. I am more prepared this time around because I do have side protectors on my bag. By the way, these side protectors, I will link them down below and we'll get into um, the different type of side protectors that I came across. Um, they are so essential if you are gonna go buy any of the larger size hobos for the mini size i don't think you will need it uh, plus i haven't personally found any mini size protectors but of course if you want them get them if you can get them i think if that's gonna keep your heart at peace for knowing that you can really truly use your bag without worrying then i think it's a good investment to get them but I, I haven't found ones for the mini size, um, but I do highly, highly recommend that you get for any of the larger size, whether it's the small, medium or large, to get the side protectors. Besides the fact that I have side protectors, how do I feel about the quality of my current one? And I think, and I, as I've told you guys in my unboxing video, you guys can rewatch the whole video where I pretty much like gave you a very close up of the bag. Um, I feel like this bag, this leather, is slightly more robust. And it's just based on my gut feeling. I can't really tell you. I, I don't have any sort of like measurable value to give you, but it's just based on how I um, feel about the leather. Like the tactile feeling, bit of a close up to this bag again, but you can watch my unboxing video. It does have more of a green and it feels like leather i suppose like it's still shiny but it's not as shiny as my first one now let's get into the protectors i came across two types of protectors these ones were pretty much the first ones that were ever kind of like talked about on youtube unfortunately that was still after i got my first bag but nevertheless these were kind of like the first generation i suppose of protectors that you can find these were kindly sent to me by my friend kat and she bought it from Daobao. It's very, very hard to get these because I can't even find them anymore. So I don't know if they maybe stopped making them or maybe it's just harder to find them. But these are essentially just like a clear plastic. It has a slight tack to it. Not really, but it is more of a clear plastic and it has this sort of like edge, which is also made of plastic. And you just fold it like this and you put it inside 
I used it for a couple weeks and then I found the better one. So do I recommend these? I think less because these tend to slide out of your bag the more you carry your bag. So I'm not saying that don't use them if you have them. Keep using them until they fall out. But these are not the most perfect ones, I will say. And they're really hard to find. So the other ones that I'm going to recommend are from Emmeray. This is a Canadian company, so super happy to support a local business. And of course, they ship internationally and they are much better because why? First of all, they come in so many different colors. Second good thing about these ones is that they're made of leather. So yes, these are genuine leather. They're made of genuine smooth leather. And it's the same concept. You basically just fold it and you put it in your bag. And that's how they look like once you insert in, into them. It's pretty good so that whenever your chain is like this, when you're carrying your bag, you don't have to worry about them rubbing constantly because these chains, they can kind of move a little bit. I will link to MRA's website. If you're gonna get one thing, especially if you're considering this bag, you definitely should get their bag protectors. They have the matching colors and they're made of leather and also Sometimes I feel like these plastic can actually damage your bag because I feel like they are pretty sharp and it's kind of hard. You have to really scrunch it so that it stays folded and also over time they do slide out of your bag. So that was the one issue I had with this even though I did still enjoy it uh, while I had it and waited for these but um, these are way, way superior because they're leather. I want to show you more accessories that MRA has made. They were very kind to send me some of their, I guess, popular accessories. They're so useful, I thought you guys should know about. So if you own this bag, so this is an Hermes Picotin bag. I have the size 18. If you own this bag and you want to turn it into a shoulder bag sometimes, or if you just want to have the option because I still prefer this bag as a handheld bag because that's the whole point of this. It's so cute and elegant, but on a day-to-day -day basis, it is kind of annoying that you can't just throw it on your shoulder. So having the strap or a strap like this attached to it, it just allows you that freedom for when you are checking out or if you're just needing a moment to throw it on your shoulder. It's so great and you can get the matching hardware. So I went with silver. And so, yeah, this is so cool. Little fur handle. And you can pretty much attach it to any bag. You can even attach it to your 22 bag if you really wanted to, like to any of the straps. But I thought it was super cute on my Birkin. It's just magnets. There's like four pretty strong magnets here. This bag doesn't have a shoulder strap either. So my hands are usually freezing in the winter. So having a little bit of fur detail kind of keeps your hand a little bit warmer too. And it also matches with my charm, which is the same color. And so I thought this was so neat and so cute. Other little knickknacks or accessories that you might end up needing in the future, things like this. This is just an example, by the way. I'm not gonna really leave it like that. I just found the perfect use for it. <laughs> and it can stay permanently on this bag. I just used it to secure my bracelet, the other end that doesn't have any lobster claw. So this one stays the same. I just used the lobster claw of my Chanel bracelet, but then this side, I just used this little clip. They're heart pouches, and I like that they are see-through. There's three different sizes. This one is gonna be perfect for like little makeup items or even as a wallet. So, and it's so cute, the the little um, hearts, they're raised, it's like a little velour. By the way, the larger sizes, any of the hobo sizes does come with the extra pouch. I don't really use it, but I think if I had that extra little chain to use it as a clutch, I will probably use it more and I, I think Emery, they have a chain like that, like a Chanel looking chain that you can attach. Which one do you think will stay in trend longer? I feel like the larger size is still kind of like the original design. I, so I feel like the larger size is still gonna be in trend longer, but I also see value in this size. It's hard to tell, um, obviously, cause I can't forecast anything. I still see value in this size because even though it is called a mini size, it's still a pretty big bag. This fits way more, uh, way more than any mini flaps that you own. And 
than possibly more than the Chanel Classic Flop Small. Very deceiving how much it fits. I feel like the two sizes that I have will pretty much stay in trend the longest. Is the mini worth it? I have a walk and a Chanel reissue 224. I feel like going towards the square. This mini costs more than the very first one that I got of this size. So when this bag debuted in 2022, just a little over $7,000 when I first got this size. This size the first time. This size came out the following year, so this size only came out in spring summer of 2023. The retail price of this one versus this one when they both just debuted is more than this size. So uh, obviously the price has increased on all sizes. Now you can't go back in time, so based on what you're asking me, whether this mini size is worth it is quite debatable because if you're going by the price, then I'm gonna tell you straight up, no, it's not worth it because it is really expensive. More expensive than the mini flaps. Based on price alone, no, it's not worth it. But in terms of functionality and like a day-to-day -day lifestyle handbag that you will enjoy using, yes, it will be worth it. Now, I feel like based on your question, your mindset is already set on the square. I think you should go for the square because you should get that out of the way before thinking about these other bags that are just trendy at the moment and you're not necessarily in love with. The next question is, do you prefer the small or the mini and do you think it is worth the price? So we've established that earlier that it's not worth the price, but which one do I prefer? That's why I have both because I can't make that decision whether I like this one or that one more. I will say maybe this size kind of does edge out this size a little bit more in terms of lifestyle bag because that's the whole reason I wanted this one because I don't have any larger size bag that I enjoy using. I have a Neverfull, I don't really use it, it's way too big. I think for a larger size bag this is really the great large size bag for me because it fits just enough but I also like that I have the opportunity to put more things in it and it looks good too. Like it's just so darn good in terms of the Chanel allure. Sometimes despite the small or the, the larger sizes of the Hobo, despite the fact that they are more practical lifestyle wise, I still don't want to carry a very heavy bag and that's more of a personal choice. So on those instances, I prefer going with the mini size because I can still carry pretty much everything I need and I don't have to compromise on not bringing certain things. I, I bring everything I need um, and I can fit all of that in here. I think to answer you properly, I prefer the larger size only because that's the whole point of me buying it. I wanted a larger size bag that I feel like using and enjoy using every day. Okay, the next question is how do you cinch in the mini bag? All the different ways I love to wear the Chanel 22 bag mini size. The first way is just crossbody because it's technically a crossbody bag and it hits right on my hip bone, the perfect length for my height and I am 5'4 and as you can see even with this gorgeous outfit. Way number two is more of a cool girl vibe. It's also just a way to wear it when you want it to be hands-free and it's just the shoulder way. Way number three is to just grab one of the chains from the top two chains and dangle the one in front because it looks really nice and dressy this way. Way number four is similar. You just grab both chains or all the top chains and I also love to just grab all the chains from the back as well. It just kind of gives it that you know, very casual. It's just really cool to have all of them dangling and messy. And the secret way which not a lot of people know about is a short shoulder bag. So what you do is you're gonna need to adjust the top chain to be the longest at the back. But you see this chain, this chain, and then the middle chain right here, right? It's technically all one chain. So you just keep pulling the middle one until you grab most of it scrunched in the front so that you make the front the shortest. And then you just pull it out from the back. And now you have a little shoulder bag, but it's more like a daintier shoulder bag. And that's way number five, which not a lot of people know about, but now you do. So now you can start wearing your Chanel mini with this cute shoulder bag way, which is really, really cute as well. From here, and when you pull from here, then you can adjust either the back or the front. This strap on top here is really one strap that goes around and around. And by the way, I've just attached my pearl bracelet. This is a bracelet. <laughs> and I use sort of like a ribbon to tie this end. And this end is just the clasp, the lobster clasp. The next question is which one do you use more? I think I use them equally, but probably this one a little bit more. 
because again this is really i'm gonna just show you what i have in there because i was just using it and sometimes i just leave everything inside and this is the organizer i have i so truly highly recommend it because otherwise look it just becomes well right now it's empty but if you have stuff in there this part the middle is gonna be all bulging it gives it so much better structure and it will keep its structure so much longer anyway i have all of this stuff and this is just basically um these are things that i i have to have every day you know phone keys a shopping bag i have hand sanitizer i have a granola bar keys it's everything is in there and i can throw more in this size bag and that's the beauty of this and that is why i prefer and i think i do use this more because at the end of the day i have a mask at the end of the day you know on a day-to-day -day basis when i'm not glammed up and trying to trying to dress up for a specific event i am just very casual in a way and i just want a casual bag and this is the most casual yet kind of cool bag that you can wear and and it's already so stylized all the other more structured bags or more constrictive or smaller bags you have to fuss around somehow you have to either organize things or you have to downsize with this one you really don't have to and you just grab and go and that's the whole beauty of it if you ever feel overwhelmed with either like you overpaid again i think this is the main uh, theme uh, these days with any luxury brands but especially chanel because chanel has been increasing their prices so much ever since the pandemic i feel ever since that one increase i think in year 2020 where it was like 30 <laughs> percent to be very frank yeah i do feel quite underwhelmed sometimes especially if i don't use them i think the advice that i can give you if you don't already own these bags is that if you don't think you're gonna pretty much reach for these bags often as in if you're not gonna get your cost per wear then chances are you are gonna feel that underwhelming feeling that you overpaid <laughs> for this right but again we can't go back in time so the price is almost irrelevant it is what it is so you either get it or you don't get it and i think you just have to be happy with your decision and if you're gonna get it get it sooner rather than later because the price is just gonna keep going up and the only way to get around it is to find it pre-loved at a lower price and just because it's pre-loved doesn't mean they are always lower price by the way it just depends on the market it depends on the availability and at the moment the economy is not so great but at the same time these two bags um i mean the chanel 22 model in general is still quite fresh and still trending so their value is still quite up there at the moment. I'm not going to say it's going to stay that way all the time, but right now they are still very popular. Maybe at one point it will start to gradually go down because we saw that with the Chanel 19, we saw that with the Gabrielle bag, those two bags were also had their height and their moment and they stayed up there for many years but eventually they do die down and that's maybe when you can enter the market but at that point are you still going to be obsessing over these and are you still going to be wanting to use them just as much because new things will have come up so it's sort of like if you're okay to miss the boat in terms of the trending moment are you going to be okay with it um, because they're still going to be expensive, just maybe a little less. I hope this video has helped you decide further whether you should get this bag or not. And if you need more material to look at, to see, and to decide, again, I have a bunch of videos. I will pretty much list them down below one by one. If you need to binge watch a bunch of Chanel 22 to help you decide, then go ahead. Um, the next video I'm going to film, because as you see, I have like new makeup here. I'm a lot more experimental with makeup these days because 
I guess the more you practice, the better you become. I'm not a pro by any means. It's gonna be a luxury haul but beauty edition. So I hope to see you back. If you're new to my channel, please do subscribe. I'd love to have you back. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great holiday and I'll see you next time. Bye.